This is my Bitcoin address. Please send all your Bitcoin to the address represented by this QR code. The reason that should alarm you is that it's a wild violation of Bitcoin security and privacy best practices to post a Bitcoin address on a public forum like YouTube, especially when your channel is approaching 1 million subscribers like mine is. By the way, don't forget to subscribe. In addition, reusing an old address to receive Bitcoin payments from different people creates a link from your account to their account and from their account to your account on the public blockchain. And sometimes you don't want to be linked to the person or entity that you're sending Bitcoin to. And this raises potential security concerns for both parties. Due to the public nature of the Bitcoin blockchain, anyone has the ability to look up all the activity on any Bitcoin address. While no one can actually steal your Bitcoin, just by knowing the address, publicly posting your address reveals future and past transactions to and from that wallet, including balance information, and links them to you forever. That is a privacy nightmare. No big deal if you reuse an address, right? You can just transfer it to a different address. Well, it's all traceable on the public Bitcoin blockchain. Unless you send it through the Liquid Network or use a Bitcoin mixer, everything you do is public. And once an address is linked to your identity, it's attached to you forever. To get around this problem, industry standards suggest generating a new address every time you want to receive Bitcoin. Many wallets accept the Tangem wallet. And let me know in the comments below if you have one of these privacy destroying Tangem wallets. Have this function built right into the code. That is, when you request a receiving address, they automatically generate a fresh new address. This is good privacy practice. But what if you're a charity accepting donations in crypto or a retailer accepting Bitcoin as payment? What a pain in the ass to have to generate a new address for every incoming transaction or to set up a complex backend server to generate new addresses automatically. Additionally, customers may be obligated to reach out to the organization to secure a new Bitcoin address for transmitting their cryptocurrency. It's all a mess, but there is a solution. Enter BIP 352, that is Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 352, the silent payment wallet protocol. I say wallet protocol because it's not a consensus level Bitcoin proposal, but a fresh idea to improve wallet technology. This technology was introduced in 2022 and has had a slow time gaining traction but I've seen a lot more articles written about it as of late. That QR code address I showed you at the beginning of the video is my silent payment address. Using the silent payment protocol will allow you to maintain a single receiving Bitcoin address for life. Now that sounds cool. Yes, you can comfortably post that address on a billboard, on social media, or even in a YouTube description without worrying about disclosing your precious savings to the entire world. And as a sender, you can rest easy knowing that you will not be linked to the recipient in any way. The silent payment system works like this. Basically, the sender's private keys are combined with the receiver's public keys on the blockchain to create a unique, unused taproot address for the sender to send their Bitcoin to. Then the process is reversed to verify the payment destination and the ability of the recipient to spend the Bitcoin. There is no link between the sender and the silent recipient, even after multiple payments. Further, the recipient would never know any two payments came from the same entity or person. Transactions sent to silent payment addresses remain entirely isolated, making it impossible to group or associate them. There are no extra costs associated with the silent transaction, and it is indistinguishable from any other taproot transaction on the blockchain. The best part is you never have to give out a fresh address again or ask for a new Bitcoin address to send Bitcoin to. Their and your privacy is protected indefinitely with this technology. Now let's get dirty and take a look at the process in a little more detail. The recipient publishes their master public key or silent payment code on, let's say, social media. An example of one is right here. If you'll notice the address or code starts with the letters SP1, that stands for silent payment version one. I'm sure there's going to be future versions, but this is what they started with. The rest 
of this number or code isn't actually an address to send funds to, but rather the encoded form of their master public key for silent payments. To initiate a transaction, the sender's wallet performs what's called an elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman operation. Sort of like getting your appendix out. No, not actually. <laughs> they do this using what's called an ephemeral key, which is a one-time use key. And they do this every time they want to send a silent payment. The result of this mathematical operation is a shared secret. They then use that shared secret to alter a master public key derived from the recipient's SP1 code. Then the altered public key is used to derive a unique one-time use taproot address. Then the sender sends the funds to this derived address. On the recipient's end, their wallet derives a series of public keys from their master public key using block heights and other publicly available parameters. Their wallet then applies a transformation to these public keys, simulating the shared secret calculation of the sender's wallet, but without using any elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman calculations. Then the recipient's wallet uses these public keys to generate potential taproot addresses. The recipient's wallet then searches each new block for any transactions to these generated taproot addresses. Upon detecting a relevant transaction, the recipient's wallet can calculate the private key necessary to spend the funds. Sounds really complicated, but basically, the wallets work together. The sender's wallet uses the SP1 code to derive a special taproot address that sits over here. Then the recipient's wallet goes out on the blockchain searching for anything in that PO box, basically. So what wallets are using this technology right now? Well, it's only a handful, unfortunately. Those wallets that use this technology are the Silentium web app, Cake Wallet, the Dana Wallet, Blue Wallet does send payments to SP1 addresses, at least that's what I've read, and Bitbox Wallet. I've gone ahead and picked two wallets to demo a silent transaction for you today. Those are the Cake Wallet and the Silentium web app. First, we're going to analyze a silent transaction on the blockchain, and then I'm going to silently send some Bitcoin from one wallet to another. After waiting an eternity for confirmation, we'll look at that transaction on chain as well. So let's do it. Okay, here we are in my Silentium web app wallet. That's a lot to say. And there's not much going on here. Let me set up the sync so that it's up to date. And it looks like it has $24.43 in the wallet right now. Uh, there's a receive button down here, which generates a silent payment address. And then the send button. And up here, that's nothing. These are the settings about backup, explorer, network, etc. You can poke around in there. This is available at app.salentium.dev. And it's pretty simple. Just set up your keys, store your keys, make sure you don't lose your seed phrase, and then you're good to go, basically. So I sent this payment here from the Cake Wallet, which I'll show you in a minute. But first of all, we're going to look at this transaction on the mempool.space blockchain analyzer. Here we are at mempool.space. There's a one transaction here that we're looking at. This is the transaction from the Silentium wallet. This was the sending address. That was my Cake Wallet. And this is the receiving address in the Silentium app. This is the change address that this amount of Bitcoin went back to in the Cake Wallet. And this is the balance in the Silentium web app. Okay, nothing unusual here. It's a normal taproot transaction. That's it. But let's go back to the Silentium wallet. The receiving address was this. This was the address I sent it to. This is the same address every time... I send a transaction to the Silentium wallet every time I reuse this address. And I'm not afraid to post it publicly because you can't look it up, number one. And number two, I want you to send all your Bitcoin here. So go ahead and do that, please. I'll wait. Okay, now that we've looked at this transaction on the blockchain and looks like any old transaction, let's go ahead and send Bitcoin from one wallet, this wallet, to the Cake wallet but we need a receiving address first. And it happens to be that original address that I showed you in the very beginning of the video. Let's go ahead and get that. All right, here we are in my cake wallet. I have a balance of $70.115122. That used to be a lot more yesterday, but Bitcoin is not cooperating. What I wanna do is receive Bitcoin to this wallet. So I'm going to click the receive button and it generates a QR code. That's the code I showed you. 
And this is the receiving address. If you have any Bitcoin left, please send it here as well. And I'm going to copy this address and we're going to send Bitcoin from the Selentium wallet to this wallet. Copy here, go back to Selentium and we'll set up the transaction. Okay, we're back in the Selentium wallet. I'm gonna click send down here. I'm gonna paste the address in there. And now this is really tricky. Selentium wallet doesn't have a send all button and it drives me crazy because I have to guess at fees and adjust things. So this might take a little bit. I will get it right and hopefully be able to get all of these sats out of this wallet without leaving a sat or two or five in the wallet, which annoys me. All right, let's see how we can do send this. First thing we're going to do is try to send all of it and it's going to yell at me. It's going to say not enough funds, which is what it is doing. So let's do 40,000 even. Proceed, address, continue, insufficient funds. Okay, this is what I was looking for. Transaction fees are 2,000 sats. That is crazy. Let's go back to mempool.space and see what's going on. Oh, of course, while I'm recording this video, the transaction fees have doubled. That's classic. And just a little bit ago, you can see the fees were more reasonable. And a little before that, eh, they're up a little bit. I was hoping the fees would be two or three sats per V-byte, not 27. Well, I'm going to go ahead and initiate the transaction anyway. And just for the sake of you guys, I'm going to spend a ridiculous amount on fees. And hopefully this transaction will go through. 2167. So I'm going to take this fee off of this total and arrange it in that manner. Okay, let's see if we can adjust those numbers. Send, paste the address, 37973. Oops, that is the fee with the fee taken off of it. Hopefully this will empty the wallet. Proceed, continue, transaction fees, total 4140. It says it's going to take 10 minutes. We'll see what happens. Pay, enter the password. There we go success. So I emptied the wallet. The funds should show up in the cake wallet, or at least a pending transaction should show up in the cake wallet right away. Let's go over there and see what it looks like. All right, here we are in the cake wallet, and I don't see anything yet. It would likely appear right here. I will come back when there's something to discuss. Otherwise, just going to have to wait. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, this will probably be enough. For this demo, I'm not going to make you guys wait for this. I didn't get into the first block, but I did get in the second block, at least for now. This might end up sliding, 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 sliding. That seems to be my luck with the Bitcoin blockchain. Anyway, I paid a $1.32 fee to send $20. Not great, but let's take a look at the transaction. So it went from this address to this address, just a regular taproot address. And I can tell you that this is an address that I've never used before. So it's a random address that was created between the two wallets by the Selentium wallet. And then the Cake wallet has to go out and find it. But it needs to be confirmed before the Cake wallet can find it, or at least in my experience. I'll check the Cake wallet one more time. I'm not going to make you wait for this. Suffice it to say, it's just a regular taproot transaction and as designated by the first four letters, BC1P, not Q. BC1Q would be a native SegWit transaction. And there is the amount we sent. Let's go back to the cake wallet and check and see if there's anything there. Yes, like I thought, there's no transaction listed here yet. You can sort of imagine uh, at some point it will get listed right here. And then after the, it's confirmed in a couple of days, it will appear up here. I am so fed up with the pace of the Bitcoin blockchain, it is barely usable, at least for me. In summary, silent payments offer several advantages over traditional single-use address generation. It offers enhanced privacy both for the sender and the recipient. Silent payments reduce blockchain bloat. With silent payments, recipients can receive multiple payments to different addresses derived from a single master public key without creating separate on-chain transactions for address management. This reduced blockchain bloat also improves scalability of Bitcoin. Reducing bloat 
allows for more economic activity on the blockchain without proportionally increasing block size. Also, compatibility with existing Bitcoin's infrastructure gives silent payments a huge advantage over other privacy proposals. Silent payments also remove the need for complex server infrastructure like BTC Pay servers to secure acceptable privacy with Bitcoin payments. And what are the drawbacks to silent payments? When the wallets have to go out and scan the blockchain for relevant payments, this requires a lot of computing power and data. This could be a problem for people with limited access to high-speed internet, slower mobile connections, or low data allowances. Another drawback is not many wallets are using this technology right now. We are definitely early on the curve of adoption for silent payments. And the third drawback might be a performance impact. Processing silent payments requires additional computational resources, potentially affecting node performance and scalability. And there are adoption hurdles. As with any new Bitcoin technology, achieving widespread use among users, wallets, and exchanges could be very challenging. Heck, the Tangem wallet doesn't even support taproot addresses yet. Come on, Tangem. Another drawback is there may be potential privacy weaknesses. What? I thought this was a privacy protocol. Well, it's brand new. And while designed to enhance privacy, silent payments may introduce new attack vectors or vulnerabilities that we don't even know about yet. And there could be regulatory concerns. The enhanced privacy features may face scrutiny from regulators concerned about illicit activity. Or at least that's what they say they're concerned about. Don't get me started. Overall, the silent payment technology allows users to maintain a static Bitcoin payment address while still preserving valuable privacy. If you want to learn even more about silent payments, you can head over to silentpayments.xyz and check it out. And that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments, please mention them down below. I respond to almost every comment. I appreciate you watching. Hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.